Online advertising is big business, and if you have spent any amount of time online, then you've probably noticed some of the biggest names in it. However, the UK fears that they're too big, and have shared their ideas of what they're going to do about that in a document released by the Parliamentary Office of Science and Technology. So in this video, we're going to break down that document and highlight what it tells us about why there's a lack of competition in online advertising, why that's a problem, and the possible solutions that the UK is looking into. The UK's advertising market is huge, the third largest globally behind the US and China. In 2022, it contributed £21 billion to the UK economy, 75% of which was from online advertising. A big reason for that is that most online sectors, such as search engines, websites and apps, rely on advertising as their primary source of revenue. So it's big business, but dominated by a small collection of large companies that you've probably heard of, because being the largest companies comes with its advantages. They benefit from economies of scale because there's a fixed investment that you need to develop and maintain a social media or search engine, and that initial investment acts as a barrier to entry for anyone newly entering entering the scene. Plus, already existing sites benefit from network effects, in that the quality of their platform improves the more people use them. Both in terms of the training of their algorithms, and particularly in the case of social media, the appeal of a platform will go up if users can be enticed by knowing that they have large amounts of friends and family already using it. These market effects are in the fair nature of business. However, there are concerns that some companies are using their dominant positions to give themselves unfair advantages as well and in some cases, they're being investigated for it. Here are some of the concerns that the report brought up. If, for example, you have an iPhone, Apple prompts you to opt in or opt out of tracking for third-party apps, but not its own, which can undermine app developers' abilities to monetize apps through advertising, thus driving developers to monetize through in-app purchases, which Apple takes a 30% cut of. Now, Google, who makes up 90% of the UK's search advertising revenues, plans to phase out support for third-party cookies in Chrome this year, with third-party cookies being a tracking technology which competitors are reliant on for advertising. As a result, it's very possible that Google could gain an advantage from these changes. It has access to a huge amount of data through its other services that it can use to inform its advertising, whereas competitors don't. Meanwhile, Meta, who make up over half of the UK's display advertising revenues, is being investigated to see whether it used data from online advertising to favour its own services, basically using the stats of third-party advertising campaigns on its site to improve its own Facebook marketplace advertising. But Ultimately, why are all these things such a problem? Well, reduced competition is harmful to consumers. It limits innovation and choice, it raises the price of goods and services, and it limits the control that users have over their own data. So, knowing these problems and the threat that it poses to consumers, what's the solution? What can be done to tackle the lack of competition in online advertising? Well, that's where the UK's Competition and Markets Authority comes in, particularly with their branch known as the Digital Markets Unit, or DMU, who were recently set up by the UK government to tackle this very issue of promoting competition in online markets. The Competition and Markets Authority have essentially made three recommendations that the DMU be given power to mandate data separation, that the DMU be given power to mandate data access to third parties from large platforms, and that a watchful eye be kept on the development of alternatives to third party cookies. If the DMU mandated data separation, then companies would be prohibited from sharing certain types of data between different platforms that they own. This means that companies couldn't use their dominance in one market to suppress competition in another just by carrying across their data. Though good for competition, this could have the side effect of making platforms less personalised. Now, where data separation reduces the sharing of data between branches of large companies, mandated data access goes almost completely the opposite direction. This would force the likes of Google and Meta, who have access to disproportionately massive amounts of data, to share some of it with rival third parties. This would have to be done in a way that complies with data protection legislation. But, if it was, it would create a more even playing field when it comes to understanding the success of different advertising campaigns. As for keeping an eye on alternatives to third-party cookies, at this stage that pretty much just means keeping an eye on Google, who plan to phase them out of Chrome with a new API. In 2022, Google did address the Competition and Market Authority's concerns by agreeing to rigorous tests and trials of the new API. 
There are other alternatives, usually that allow users to express preferences in the usage of their data. However, in a lot of cases, it is required that the user also submits an email address to use as an identifier for said preferences. And this has been criticized by some groups who say that users shouldn't have to submit their email address. Plus, more broadly, there is a question over how well users will understand these measures. The document points towards an academic survey of 11,000 consumers worldwide, which concluded that measures to increase competition that rely on users transferring their own data might be hampered by digital literacy, or lack of it. Nevertheless, a lot of this boils down to a tension between the need to increase competition and the need to maintain data privacy. Attempts to manage the balance of one may risk compromising the other. Despite that, a joint statement between the Competition and Markets Authority and the Information Commissioner's Office, who handle data and consumer protection, indicates that they're confident that they can walk the line of improving competition while staying within the bounds of data protection law. And it looks like it's happening. Just recently, the UK government introduced the Digital Markets Competition and Consumers Bill, which will grant the DMU some of the powers outlined earlier. At the time of making this video, the bill is still making its way through Parliament. But, assuming it passes, time will tell to see just how effective all of these measures will be. That's all for this video, but consider subscribing to the Science Fairs YouTube channel for highlights of the science informing today's policy. Thank you so much for watching.